Oh crap. Okay, sorry. Okay, my computer was about to start playing music, so. All right. So I guess from you see hearing how my voice sounds, because my voice was completely fine this morning. Okay, well not completely, but it was halfway fine, and now it's almost out now, but I'm kind of upset about that. But anyway, tell it from my voice, you can tell where I came from yesterday, aka I came from the Amoeba Culture concert last night. And to be honest with you, I think that was probably one of the best concerts I have ever been to. Like... It was, yeah, it's definitely one of the best concerts I've ever been to. So you have to snap back on. <laughs> Sorry, my voice sounds like shit. I apologize. If you've seen my other reviews for concerts, every single concert video review I've ever done is always the day after. With my voice sounding exactly like this from belting out music at the top of my lungs. Like I was on the stage with the artist. So, technically, I apologize that my voice sounds so incredibly bad, but I decided to talk about the concert because I want it to be still fresh on my mind or whatever. So this is legit all we've been talking about today is the damn concert. That's all I've seen on my timeline. It's all I've seen on Facebook. It's about the concert. So, yeah, let's get started. So, in the beginning... Okay, so let's start with the beginning of my journey. So, I was waiting online from... 9 a.m. like 9 30 a.m. I got there um my friends actually got there before me around 7 30 and then there was actually a girl before us who got there around 6 a.m. for this concert so this concert wasn't a game also this concert it, it was completely sold out so yeah imagine all the turtle little huh oh my god I apologize I will cut this and hopefully, actually probably won't. I'm probably just going to stick both of the videos together on iMovie as per usual. But, yeah, so the beginning of our trip was us being outside at the crack of dawn in the fucking freezing cold. Um, originally, when I first saw the weather for this concert, it said it was going to be 55 degrees and sunny. Then unfortunately, during the turn this week in New York City, it decided to be winter again for one day and that one day was yesterday the high yesterday was like 38 degrees while we were outside it started snowing and we also all the people who were in the front of the, like the line or whatever had to start taking turns because we were getting too cold mind you i'm very surprised i do not feel like shit right now i'm, I'm very surprised i'm very surprised <laughs> but I don't and that's what's important so, yeah, I'm very happy I don't feel like shit. Because <laughs> it easily could have taken a turn. And yeah, my new today was all bright and sunny and in the 50s and all this other bullshit. So I'm kind of upset about that. But whatever. Moving on. I was waiting in line from around 9.30 to around 5 something. It was close to 6. We went inside. Um, let's see. And then we went inside or whatever. To be honest with you, this wasn't my highlight of the concert usually. Usually this is usually the highlight, but this time it wasn't. I kind of just got shoved into, like, it really wasn't even a meet and greet. It was a photo op. <laughs> Deadass, it was a photo op, y'all. <laughs> I made it into my own slight meet and greet because I literally turned around when they put Deadass. I did not even get to take off my sweatshirt. I didn't even get to take off all my underclothes because that's how fast I got pushed into the photo. Like, legit, the guy was like, you can't drop your bags here. You have to have it with you by you in the photo. I was about to be like, bruh. So they gonna see my big, my pink Jansport back, backpack and all my, my big ass North Face coat. But hey, if you see that in the picture on Facebook, y'all. Hey, my backpack made it into the photo too. And Korea University got a shout out because I had my KU shirt on, my KU University sweatshirt on. So I went into my photo op or whatever. <laughs> and I actually turned around because I was like, I'm going to have some type of interaction with these men. Since I've been, I've been freaking listening to them. From almost two years now, so I'm like, I'm going to turn around and I will say hi. And I have this big ass hair, so of course they probably gonna remember me. So I kind of turned around and I was like, hey guys. And they were all like, hi. I was like, yeah, okay, great. Uh, that was good enough for me. Plus, I made this girl go in front of me because the hair isn't gonna block her. She was tinier than me. I was like, okay, you can go in front of me. Yay. And then I was then Troy started laughing at me because he understood exactly what I was saying because I was like, 
this, you can't stand behind this. You're not, you're not going to be seen if you are. So, yeah. So, and that was like my little mini interaction with Choiza. I don't like talking about stuff like that, but that was like my little mini whatever with Choiza. I really want to be like next to Hyoso, but you don't understand. Like, people like legit was like, but I, dot, 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 move. And I was like, whatever. All right. So, then, mind you, we've been waiting since 9 a.m., right? So, I'm saying, I get to be in the front, right? Basically, I think for the next concert, I invite me and Cree. <laughs> I fucking waste some money on me and Cree. Because the priority pass people got to be in the middle. So I was like, what the hell did I pay for? I love the people who do these shows. I know them. But uh, next time, Daphne Dazon is not paying for meet and greet. Because every single time she has meet and greet, some random shit goes down. And I don't get exactly the meet and greet that I kind of want. So from now on, Daphne's going to be calling in the jail. She's going to increase the same my extra $50. So because all the priority pass people got to be in the middle and I was there since 9 a.m. and they got there like whatever time they got there so from now on I'm never ever 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 buying a beat and greet ticket and if I do I'm going to stand there and make sure I get every cent worth and I'm going to be in the middle simple as pie right right Alright, so after that whole photo op debacle, and we went upstairs or whatever, and then all these people that didn't even have my type of ticket were fucking in front of me. I was like, not today, Satan. Not today. I've been waiting outside in the cold for hours, and so was my friends. So, I legit went to the other side of the stairwell, and my ass waited. It was like an Olympic trial upstairs, because for how everybody became a track star when the guy said, you can go back downstairs. I have never seen people run that fast in my entire life. I, well, you know, I have, but just not in front of me. <laughs> I've never seen people hit stairs that quick. Like, everybody was skipping stairs to get downstairs to get a seat. But luckily, I got to be on the le far left, but in the front, on the banister. And trust me, I don't run for anything but transportation. That's it, literally. That's basically kind of coining me as a fat ass, but that's kind of my title at the moment. I don't really run. So when I ran to go downstairs, I made it to the front. That was a testament. <laughs> so finally I get to the front or whatever. And I know a lot of my friends were waiting up front. The thing that pissed me off is that some of them had to stay upstairs in the balcony because they weren't going to make it back down because they were on the other side of the stairwell that... They were on the other side of the floor. So to reach the stairwell to get back downstairs, it wouldn't have made sense because they would have been all the way in the back. So instead, they kind of compensated and stayed upstairs, but in the front of the balcony. So then uh, the concert started around 8. So yeah, it was around 8 o'clock. It was a two-hour concert, which is good because I really did get the full two hours worth. They legit didn't stop singing for two hours. So yeah. All right. So then... Um, let's see. The first person... Okay. We gotta talk about this. The first person was Crush. Now, I feel like... <laughs> they tried to ease me in with DJ Frizz. By the way, DJ Frizz is fine. Like, he is gorgeous. He's fine. He's very fine. I was like, oh, I like you. You look good. You look nice. So I got eye candy for, like, the first couple minutes. It was, like, a nice, cool DJ set. A lot of us are like twerking in the audience. I apologize. <laughs> but it was just fun. Like everybody was just dancing in the audience, kind of just waiting to see who was going to be first. And then they did like the little intro thing in the top or whatever. Like, you know, like the normal intro, like slides, like little cartoons and stuff like that. There's like a Marvel-ish comic strip type thing, which runs with the whole amoeba culture theme or whatever. So it was really cute. And then I saw Crush's name pop up and I legit felt my heart drop to my stomach because I was like, I thought they were going to ease me into Crush. They were like, no, he's first. Whoop. And as you guys know, I'm the person that comments that basically is the top comment on almost every single Crush video. So for me, I had to like, I was trying to prepare myself for the past two months for this damn thing and it really didn't help because my stomach still like felt, fell when he came out. So I was like, I legit started screaming, which is probably why my voice sounds like this is because I immediately started screaming as soon as he came out. Like my, I wouldn't, I did not shut up. 
I really didn't shut up for like the first part of this concert. I really didn't because I basically knew every song. So I was that impromptu singer in the audience. Apologies. Probably not. I don't think I was that loud. I hope not. But yeah, he was the first person. He sang Whatever You Do. He sang a little bit. He did Loco song, which I was like, secretly, when he said Loco, my heart dropped again because I thought Loco was going to pop out from the shadows. I was going to be like, my fluffy Wumpkins is here. But then he wasn't. But it's okay. Because I feel like that would have been a little much. <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot. But, yeah. So, he sang, um crush on you he sang sometimes he sang hug me obviously obviously like if he didn't say hug me it would have been like an injustice to the world or something so yeah and then like I, <laughs> i'm kind of sad he didn't sing so far but i'm kind of grateful because that would have been like the beginning of the tears and i'm happy my crying started later in the concert because my whole makeup would have been finished like in the first half hour of the concert so yeah this man, okay, one of my friends on a Facebook group that I'm in went to the Atlanta show. She wrote her review, like, via writing before, and I was reading it while I was online. <laughs> and she said, crushes a tot on stage. <laughs> oh, this girl could not have been any more right. This dude was grinding his hips in the air. Like, I've never wished to be air so bad in my entire life. Like, if I could just be the air that surrounded his pelvis for this whole concert, I would do it. I would do it. I'd do it, gladly. I would just volunteer my time to do so. I'd do it. I'm so serious. Like, he was even stand, like, this talking dude could even stand still. Like, he would be like, but about guys, who's single? When he asks who's single, I've never seen so many girls. I bet girls with their boyfriends don't roll their hands. <laughs> Everybody was like, me, I'm single. Very, 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 very single. <laughs> very single. Like, extremely single. Like, single to the nine. Because that was the one question I understood in Korean. That was one of my highlights of his little thing, too. But, like, legit, like, he can't even stand still. Like, he starts grinding air while he's standing like he just physically can't stand still and it was very distracting because he'd be talking but then my eyes would try and then i have to pick it back up and be like yes he's talking pay attention <laughs> yeah that's unfortunate right <laughs> bad daphne <laughs> yeah i know <clears throat> well and then wait there's a very pivotal moment i know that i'm uh, Oh, here we go. He also needs to stop looking at his lips. <laughs> he was borderline LL Cool J status for like a good 15 minutes of his set. And I was like, I don't need this. I don't need this right now. Stop! Why? Chill. <laughs> this man is a, he like every, like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna say this line later too. I'm probably gonna say this a lot. But everybody in Amoeba Culture is beautiful. Like, every single one of them. Like, <laughs> they're all gorgeous people. Sometimes I feel like some of these companies, <laughs> you gotta sign a contract that saves you at least a 10 on the scale of 1 to 10. Because <laughs> everyone in Amoeba Culture is gorgeous. I hate when they usually say that Crush is the most gorgeous one. He is very gorgeous, but all of them are gorgeous. Even Primary is gorgeous. Let's get to that. After his set, like, I don't remember it was before or after his set. Cause Crush is set, like, put me through, like, a loop. Like, I legit went through a lot of emotions during that set. I was like, that's why I was, that's why I said I'm happy to do so far. Cause then it would have been, like, the end of the concert. <laughs> I probably would have gotten an asthma attack and it would have been <laughs> done. But, I love the way they transitioned. Cause they did just, and they brought Science out. So that was their kind of, like, transition for artists. And I was like, I can't do this. When they say just, I was that bitch in the front. I'm so sorry to everyone behind me, but I literally was like going to church in the audience. Like I was singing along so hard. The Korean was probably terrible, but I was just like syllables on fleek, my Korean on fleek right now because, oh my God, that's one of my favorite songs from Bible culture, period. So when that song came on, I knew I was gonna feel a lot of spirit from it so I felt it 
<laughs> Those are basic. And that's how they transitioned to Zion T. Zion T set was... I, honestly, I really wanted him to sing like every single song that he's ever done. <laughs> he didn't do Miss Kim. And he didn't do Click Me. I really wanted to do the hi, hi. That was really what I was waiting for. I was going to be that person. But fortunately, he didn't do that song. I was kind of sad. Because that was his first song I've ever seen by him. It's kind of sad. He did two melodies. He did two melodies. And then he did Baby. And then he got to Yanghua Bridge. And this is when Zion T actually spoke English. He was like, do you guys know the song? Do you guys know the words? Do you guys know what the words mean? You could tell everybody in the audience was ready for an emotional roller coaster because everyone knows that's like the crying song of Zach, like, I think, like, every single person in Amigo Culture has that one song that you know you'll start crying if you hear it. For Crush, it's Sofa. For Zion T, it's Young Bridge. I shit you not, everybody in that audience became emotional in that audience. I don't care what you say, you got emotional during that damn song, because everyone was crying in my corner. Like, everybody. Everybody was tearing up. He would tell people to sing along. You could tell people was getting choked up while they were singing along. Because I think most people know the meaning of the words behind Yanghua Bridge. And it's a very heartfelt, like the words mean a lot. And it's a really emotional song. So when everyone was like, Apuji my go like you could hear people like choking up. Like handbook cut. Like I was choking up so hard. Like that was the actually the part I couldn't scream. Cause if I started screaming, I would have started dramatically crying. So I was like, I was literally like dabbing my eyes. So I was like, I don't want to mess up my makeup after go. I was like, no, I'm gonna mess up my makeup. I don't want to look like mad dramatic in the front row. Like people just kept dabbing their eyes like OD, being like, oh my god, so who put these onions here? That's literally was like that was literally how my whole entire emotion was for that whole song. Like I could not. I was trying back to like not let them fall out of my eyes. <laughs> Oh my god. But Zion T set was amazing because I was dancing my butt off. Because this man has so much groove songs, so like, you have to dance. If you don't dance, you make me mad because you just, you need to move to his songs. You can't help but stand, not stand still. Especially when See Through You came out. Oh my god, when See Through came out, I was like, See Through You. See Through I was like, oh shit, this is great. This is amazing. This is my jam. Let's get it. But then that's how, this is why I told you they are like basically the kings of transitions. <laughs> Cause it's how they transition to that dynamic duo. And that makes no sense. I was like, you guys really know how to transition. You guys are officially the masters of transitioning with multiple artists. Cause the bad beauty about Amiibo culture is that they're all featured on each other's stuff. Even though some for some of the songs they didn't come out, but then that let people rip out their own bars, AKA Crush. Cause he started spitting bars on fleek. Bars. I was like, get it, Hiosa, get it. Ah, that was literally me the whole entire. I called so I called <laughs> Zion T and Crush by their government names so many times, and I really hope they didn't hear me. I really hope they didn't hear me, but whatever. So that's how they gen de transitioned to dynamic duo, and then they got to dynamic duo. Let me tell you, these men are live, like. If you want a good live show, you go to a dynamic duo concert. I remember last year I could not go to the Washington show because I had senior thesis and I wanted to graduate. So I could not go, but I remember my friends who did go told me it was live as hell. Boy, did I was I not disappointed. These men are extremely live, like, Extremely live. Like, I was taken aback for a minute because I was like, whoa. Like, their stage presence is, like, so, like, ah, like, you feel it as soon as they come out. It's amazing. Like, it's an amazing thing to watch. You know what I mean? And then, um, after that, they did some, they did Chill Check. They did Second Hand. They did, um, Bam. They did, they did a lot of songs. She's <laughs> I was like, I was really trying to keep up because I was like, Lord, I'm catching my life too hard right now. I just need to remember to breathe. <laughs> That's why I have to remind myself at concerts now is to remember to breathe. Because when Bam came on, I went too hard. I went too hard. I was basically singing the chorus for them from my corner. 
But let me tell you something though. <laughs> my finger's already wagging. Remember during AOMG, I don't know if any of y'all saw my AOMG video, but remember in that video I said Simon D gathered the hell out of me. Choisa did that to me. It's so uh, I was so upset because Choisa just kept coming back to my side of the stage. I don't know if you remember me from the photo op and me having such huge hair or whatever, but he legit, like all my fan cams of him is literally in front of me. Like, and then my friend Zadie kept like nodding, nodding like nudging me because he would just stand and like stare at me and I'd walk away and I'd come back and just stare and stand and stare at me again and like rap at me like Simon D did. And I was like, what is it with you grown men always having to pick me out of a crowd and do these things? This is a lot. I need you to stop. You're both taken. Gecko and Choiza. Stay in your lanes. Remain in them. That is my correct worth for you. I do not need any more freaking biases. I have enough. There's a lot of them. They are hard to manage. My UB is already a lot in general. AKA J Park, if you don't read my comments. I, I feel like you do if you're watching this. So I already have a UB that I see almost every day. So I'm like, need y'all to relax. I do not need any more UBs. Try it. like I've been looking at my list since I've been home today and I'm like, hmm, should I add them to my Venn diagram? I don't know yet. Oh my God, why? But once again, I got gathered again. Again, oh God, again. Oh Lord, but I think in terms of everything, granted, like these men, these men are just extremely amazing performers. Like they don't need dancing. You know what I mean? Like they don't, they don't need to dance. They don't need that. They don't need it. They just need to sing. You know what I mean? They just need a rap. That's it. That's all they need. I think that's the beauty behind Amoeba culture. There's such an organic environment that was literally made off of pure hip hop. They were one of the first all hip hop companies. You know what I mean? Like they are one of the first with Amoeba culture. Cause it was made in 2006, before Alienaire, before OMG, before Brand New, was Amoeba. Know what I mean? So, and you could, the, I think also the wonderful thing about Amoeba is that you can see the camaraderie between all the people that are in this company. Because it's so small and because it's so close knit, you can tell like they're like this really adorable family. I think that's why I love K-hip hop companies in general is because they're generally very small so they're all they have this camaraderie of we're all in this together we all did this show together we made this together so at the end of the show they had all of them come out primary by the way primary took off the box and he is fine That's all. You're gonna see his face all over the internet. Cause I know all my friends took pictures. Everyone was like, click, 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 he took off the box. Oh my God, he took off the box. I know he did no Infinity Challenge, but I don't watch Infinity Challenge like that. But when I was at the show, I almost fell over when he took the box off. And I was like, oh my God, 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 oh my God. But yeah, anyway. I just love the, com I love the family aspects. Like you can tell like Gecko and Toys Are. Zion T, Crush, you can tell they're all one big old family, like, the two, like, grown big papas, like, the really awesome mentors is Dynamic Duo, and then Zion T is, like, the seasoned arm, B artist, and, like, his son is, like, Crush, <laughs> and he's a seasoned arm, B artist as well, you know what I mean, like, when you just want that good R&B, you already know when you just want it, you go get that Crush out. You go get that Zion T album. When you want that good hip hop, you go listen to a Dynamic Duo album or you go listen to Red and Gray. You know what I mean? Like, this is such a good show to watch. Damn, this is worth my money. All these shows I've been to have been worth my money, man.
I'm not gonna lie. This is probably one of my top five concerts I've been to. Because I just caught so much life. Like, I felt it. Like, I think other than BAP, this is the first concert I cried in since BAP. Because BAP is the only other concert I cried in. Because this one, like, no, you don't understand. No one can hold back tears during Gone Con Bridge. People broke down after the concert. That's how serious this was. So I'm like, yeah, this concert was like that. But that's my review for this concert. It was really good. I secretly want to bump into, like, bump into them in the city and be like, because they're actually staying here till the end of the month. So I kind of want to be like, hey, y'all want to go to Brooklyn? Come visit me. Come visit me. Come visit me, please. Please, seriously, if you want to come visit me, I'll take you to really awesome places in Brooklyn. Manhattan isn't the only borough. Uh, that was my attempt at a Zion T impression. It was better, like, Saturday before I didn't have a voice and sounded like fro a frog that sucked in too much helium and then spit it out too quickly. But yeah, that was my review. It was a really nice concert to watch. You know what I mean? It's really good. I'm so happy I went. I really, really, really am. But peace and love, y'all. This is my very long review. It's actually longer than my AOMG one. <laughs> it's actually ironic. My UB one is shorter. And look, I have the first chapter shirt on. Hey. And the first chapter, like I said earlier. Hat. I'm representing, y'all. I'm wearing this to work tomorrow. Hey. Actually, that's dirty. I should wash it. Well, no, I just took it out the package today. But still. Much love, y'all. Hope I see y'all at the next concert. You already know everybody gonna be camping out for BTS. I see you there. We all gonna be one big old family in line in front of Best Buy. Ho, ho. Love y'all. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm still like off a hive yesterday. Love y'all. Bye.